Hello, it is Monday, the 10th of November, 2008, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Uh, we had uh, a little selling here today. The NASDAQ 100 finished with a loss of 1.3% uh, after losing 42 cents on the uh, QQQQ. Uh, you can see here that uh, we have this big red candle. The market initially had gapped uh, much higher than that. In fact, in the pre-market, it was trading right up to this, uh, just, just below the 3250, 3247 was the highest I had seen it uh, in the pre-market here uh, this morning and with a declining five-day moving average you have to be very careful uh, especially obviously when we have a declining 10 20 50 100 200 etc um, you know the path of least resistance remains lower the burden of proof is on the uh, on the on the buyers in this market we're in you know we're in a bear market we did come down and test the lows from uh, last week which were uh, made uh, Thursday afternoon at about thirty dollars and forty cents and for now it held surprisingly uh, especially considering the fact that you know you've got General Motors down at three dollars a share uh, Google breaking down uh, Goldman Sachs just a few of the uh, continued uh, just real decimations of equity in a lot of these uh, big-name companies so uh, overall I think the market held up a little bit better but I think that's probably only a temporary thing as you can see here that this prior support acting as resistance in here and uh, if we go to the 30 minute time frame uh, as we noted uh, last week the 61.8 percent retracement of the lows from from right here up to the these highs here uh, brings it brought us down to that $30.40 level and it was also coincident with this prior uh, level of resistance so $30 and let's just say down to 20 cents or so uh, $30 and 20 cents to $30 and 40 cents remains an important level for this market to hold above I think if it stays below that level for more than about 15, 30 minutes or so, then we could see a quick move down to test those lows and perhaps make newer, uh, uh, lower lows for this market. So we remain in a very dangerous environment. Uh, we had seen that big gap up, and actually in the pre-market, like I said, we were up at 32.40, but right from the beginning, we had seen uh, selling in here, and it was remaining below the daily VWAP all day long. Uh, I hadn't posted this to the blog earlier but we'd seen support initially at the two-day moving out two-day VWAP and then we had some resistance there and that's where we really saw uh, the the strongest part of the sell-off in here today was after bouncing from that level but uh, obviously this remains a critical level down to about thirty dollars and twenty cents and uh, again I think breaking below there could spell uh, perhaps a, a test of these lows or even a lower low is just more people just continue to be frustrated with the tape here and uh, basically give up all at once and, and, and if that could happen then uh, maybe we would uh find an emotional low that, that, that could be traded to the long side. It remains very risky. It's still a day trading environment. None of that has changed. Gold continues to remain volatile, but uh, the, the main thing that I think we're seeing in here is this, this gold market gaps up and then sells off. That seems to be <clears throat> more common than anything in this market right now still below that declining 50-day moving average. Guilty till proven innocent. Same with uh, oil. Oil was up today. Hold on. Oil was up today, but uh, you know we, when you look at what happened to it intraday, it had gapped higher initially, right up to this level where it had seen a little bit of prior support here on this five-minute time frame, and sold off from there. But then we had a little bit more recovery in here. Uh, they were trying to bring out the oil, uh, bullish people on oil and CNBC. There's nothing bullish about this on, on basically any time frame you look at. Uh, the only thing you can say is that it's down a lot, and that's never a reason to buy. The natural gas actually held up. Uh, I'd mentioned this on Friday. Natural gas held on to its gains. Um, so we had seen, uh, let me just change that here for all time frames, UNG. Here in the five minute time frame, it gapped up, pulled back, but then closed right up near those uh, highs for the day and back up into this level where we've seen some uh, some resistance lately. And obviously, uh, this looks like that pattern that I'm just getting sick and tired of mentioning in all the markets. So I'm not going to mention it today uh, because, you know, it's just one small, small 
piece of a puzzle, a potential turnaround scenario, but we've still got a declining 50-day moving average in here. Most likely, we see may, you know, if, if we get above that 50-day moving average, it probably fails to hold, and then we come down, and maybe then the other moving averages can turn back above it. That is the 10 and 20, that 50-day moving average flattens out. And then from there, maybe we can start to see a rally emerge, but there's still nothing bullish about this natural gas other than very short term where it seems to be holding on to its gains certainly better than oil and a lot of these other uh, markets that you know the initial scare you out now we're in that wear you out process in here Russell 2000 uh, had lost uh, 2.3 percent so you can see we've got a, a pretty ugly looking chart in here obviously still uh, we had been looking at the uh, the pattern of uh, the you know inverted head and shoulders in here it doesn't look like uh, that's really something to take uh, seriously right now. I don't. I think that you know this market is breaking down. It gapped up went into a declining five-day moving average. Found those sellers uh, right here on the one-minute time frame all day long. Finished uh, much closer than the lows than the other markets did. So uh, still looking very vulnerable to further downside in here. And I think on the uh, Russell 2000, same thing. Maybe we go back down towards that $45 level uh, and, and test these lows, maybe make lower lows. It still remains a bear market. The financials were uh, down $0.42 cents or uh, just about 3%, 2.95%. Uh, this obviously is our bigger level of uh, resistance here in the you know, intermediate term. It's about 16 and a half, 17. Uh, let's, let's dial in that, that in a little bit better uh, at about 16, uh, 1650 or so. And we can see that we're heading back down towards these lows very quickly in here. Now we're only you know about 80 cents off the uh, off the lows. And uh, more time support is tested, the more likely it is to fail to hold. And certainly with you know stocks like Goldman Sachs breaking down. Uh, Citigroup, you know, looking as weak as it does, it's it's amazing that these uh, markets actually are holding up as as much as they are, and I think it's just inevitable that we're going to get that uh, next emotional wave of selling. I, I still think it's uh, you know around the corner, and by no means do I think it's going to uh, mark the bottom or the end of the bear market. Maybe in hindsight, but uh, you know there'll still be a lot of pain ahead, as we've seen all these giant rallies that get people excited. You have to have a strong defense to lock in those gains because in a primary downtrend with a declining 50-day moving average with a declining 200-day moving average etc the burden of proof remains on the sellers here even on the 10-minute uh, time frame we can see this market uh, got up close to that declining five-day moving average and this prior level of support at ninety six dollars uh, we we you know we saw the whole uh, lows from last week hold up for now in here as well but uh, you know a big open like that first of all if our you know US government in, injects 700 billion dollars into their rescue package and that doesn't save the market how is a Chinese rescue package gonna help save our market and that's I think with the attitude of people uh, who had stock to sell in here today so you've got to look at and I had posted that uh, as, as kind of a warning uh, first thing in the morning here is that uh, you know let price action guide your decisions not your emotional response to a headline I, th I saw and I'd said that because I'd you know been reading a little bit online in the morning a lot of people were excited that the market was gapping higher thinking that it was going to continue to rally but we're in a bear market and gaps in a downtrend usually do not hold especially when they're coming up to significant levels of prior support uh, that have the potential obviously to act as resistance there and that uh, important declining moving average so burden of proof continues to be be on the buyers here. Nothing has changed. We're in a bear market with a lot of risk.